course was always very simple and direct in the sense that I, I quickly felt from working with the course like, ah, oh, all these pages, all these chapters and everything, and this is just, just designed to get me in touch with the, my intuition, with the higher power, with the intuition, with the Holy Spirit. That's all it's for. It's only got one purpose. And you mentioned in the introduction, you said, I'm not, I don't hear guidance. I don't hear guidance. And that's pretty much the condition of the human condition. I mean, if, if, if human beings, if out of the seven billion, the majority of them were tuned in to their higher self and hearing the guidance, well, that would make pretty short work of this world. Time and space wouldn't go on for millions of years. Uh, it would be wrapped up pretty quick, because it was already wrapped up. It was, it was answered the instant that it seemed to arise. It was handled simultaneously. It wasn't even a... It was a... That's how long it took the Holy Spirit to answer the problem. Is one, it's simultaneous. So, the interesting thing is, the Course itself says, you know, very few will, will hear the voice for God directly. Very few will hear the Holy Spirit directly. I didn't take that as discouraging. You know, I took that as, okay, I guess I'll be one of the very <coughs> few then, because the other option is not good. <laughs> uh, not hearing the voice for God. I find it interesting too now that, that even though there's a lot of Course teachers that have even said, that's not a realistic goal. You know, to hear the Holy Spirit, I'd say, hmm, I don't know about that, but it's certainly realistic for me, because if, if that's my way to eternity and peace and happiness, I'm going to hear that voice. And I'm going to experience it in many ways, because if that's what the whole book's about, and the book says you will believe this Course entirely or not at all, and it's all about one thing, hearing the voice for God, you better believe I'm going to hear the voice for God. So what I found was that I actually, after a lot of immersion, like eight hours a day reading the book and then practicing it, you know, really full on, uh, that I actually, not at first, I wasn't hearing the Holy Spirit or Jesus, but actually, for about two and a half years, I was. And, and you can imagine how that would simplify things, if you had a direct pipeline to Jesus, and you were going to follow the pipeline. So <laughs> Helen had the good pipeline, and it was a hell of a ride. <laughs> she even died kind of bitterly. You know, I found the formula for awakening is listen and follow. The listening part won't even help you. As hard as it may seem to just listen to the voice for God, it still won't help you if you don't follow what the voice tells you to do. So, I find myself in kind of 20 some odd, 25, 27, whatever, how many years later, that I find it's interesting that I, I find these communities are springing up, and the people that I work with and I join with, they actually hear guidance. Believe it or not, you know, it's not like, oh, I wish I could, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. We go so deep into it that, that, that that's why the communities become more telepathic. That's why increasingly with the communities there's harmony. There's a sense of joy, there's a sense of, of fellowship, there's a sense of flowing together, there's a sense of the big dance. Because of one thing, very simple, is guidance, opening to guidance. And we have singer-songwriters who, who are not only singing, uh, but they're channeling. You know, doing what Ellen was doing. And the same with other aspects of the ministry, whether it's graphics or websites or whatever. I didn't know anything about computers, but I ended up being guided and starting using servers and all kinds of things that I knew nothing about. Just because I would sit in front of a keyboard, I didn't even have a, an attraction to computers, you know, through ten years of university even. Uh, but then there came a point where I would just sit there with the fingers on the keyboard and go, if you want something, you're going to have to do it. Because <laughs> I don't know, I don't have a clue what's going on here. And then it would happen. I would be channeling websites or, or getting into things which I knew nothing about. I had no formal training in. But through my willingness to listen and follow and be done through, these things just started to happen and happen and happen. 
things that I knew nothing about, things that I had no interest in. I had no interest in traveling. I was shy. I was very most quiet. I had no interest in public speaking. I had no interest in any of these things. And the Spirit was like, well, actually there's a very important plan going on here. And you're part of it. And you said yes. When, when I asked, are you willing to help? You said yes. You said an unequivocal yes. Not maybe. You said yes. You gave it all over and then that happened. So, to me, that's, that's, we, that's a starting point, you know, to say I'm not hearing. Um, and that's, that's the human condition. So that's, that's the starting point of the human condition. But to transcend the human condition, to transcend being a human being, to transcend the mask, that's what, you know, the, the mask of personality is the mask, to transcend the mask of the cosmos, you know, you really have to be willing to listen and to follow. And as you do that, you will see that there's a lot of, of letting go of concepts, that things that just are raised up into awareness and fall away. And the ego has fear every time there's a, like a shift in the self-concept. It's like, oh, well, where's this going? Where's, where's this going to lead? But then you're carried on into joy, and then more joy, and greater joy. And, and you know, it works. You, you're shown that it works. <laughs>